Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. How does it feel to be back on, on your court in Mackey Arena? Well, I don't think about that much, but it's always a pleasure that somebody would think uh, enough of me to name a court after me, so I really appreciate that. You're so um, iconic at Purdue, and Coach Painter and you have this really special relationship. You know, over 42 years, it's just been the two of you as coaches at Purdue, and that's pretty unheard of in college basketball. Tell us about your relationship with Coach Painter and, and what makes him so special. Well, he listens, and he's coachable, and he was a good player smart player. When he first got here, he told his dad that, I don't know if Coach Kitty knows what the heck he's doing. And his dad is a lawyer over at Muncie. And he said, hey, go back, do what he says, and be quiet. And he did, and now he's the head coach. <laughs> so you had a, a, a role in, you know, kind of giving him this head coach position. Why Why did you choose, choose Coach Painter? Because I thought he was a Purdue guy through and through and uh, would, would had the right goals in life and could teach properly. And coaches have to be teachers. Coach Wooden taught us that. So uh, it's one of those things where he's a good teacher. And, you know, he told us before that you are obviously a mentor of his. Did you have any mentors that you learned from? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I worked for Eddie Sutton at Arkansas and uh, my high school coach, Merwin Wilson, uh, uh, and when I was in high school, was a, a great leader for me and taught me how to treat people right and, and uh, how to be coachable myself. Because if I didn't listen, why would I expect my players to? Right. And when you look back at your time at Purdue, is there a favorite story or memory that uh, really There's so out? many. I could write a book probably if somebody <laughs> wanted to listen to it. But uh, mainly that I was uh, very into Purdue because they were academic oriented and my players get a degree from Purdue, you could probably get a really good job. And that's what I always insisted on. My players go to class, be on time, and try your best. That was my three rules. And, yeah, when you talk about the balance between athletics and education, how did you instill that in your players? Well, I insisted they go to class. And um, that's what my mom and dad did to me. And uh, my coaches did to me when I was in college. So it was something that Seemed to pay off for me. I got my master's and lacked about 20 hours from getting my doctor. So it was one of those things where your education is always first. So when we think about this season with, with Coach Painter, this it's a historic season, right? What what have you thought, you know, as we're leading up to March Madness? What, what well, are your... I really like the way he has the big guys get the ball. We always did that when I coached. And uh, the center was kind of the uh, focus of our offense. And he does that. And they play really good defense. And... Uh, they do things, uh, he set, sets plays for him, and I always did that because I was a quarterback in football and I always wanted to run the plays myself. So you played football as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. Played for the Steelers, a cup of coffee. How, <laughs> how did you choose between kind of going that basketball well, route? Well, basketball's inside and it's warm. <laughs> and in Kansas, it's cold in the winter, so I wanted to coach basketball. So that's how you led to that decision? Well, that's one of those things. <laughs> I kept getting better jobs. <laughs> How do you think coaching is different from when you were at Purdue to now? Uh, probably the parents were more involved when I coached and they made their, their children behave and listen to the coach and have discipline and go to class and that sort of thing. I think the parents are, are really part of my success. Do you think social media, you know, obviously that's a lot different than it was back in the day. Well, I'm not involved in that, so I don't know, but I would have to take your word for it. <laughs> I have heard from players and coaches. I mean, it's just tough because everything's happening yeah. in an instant. Right? Everybody knows about everything you're doing, yeah. Exactly. There's no secrets. Yeah. So, you know, looking back again, is there a certain game that you wish out of any game that you could change the outcome? Yeah, we played Duke and we didn't go to the Final Four. They did. So that was a heartbreaker because I felt bad for the uh, fans of Purdue because I knew how bad they wanted to go too. Yeah. What, what do you think, you know, do you have any advice for this team leading up to the Final Four? We really have a chance Well, I got year. a lot of advice, but I don't think they'd listen. I think main thing, listen to Coach Painter. He knows what he's doing. Uh, be appreciative of the fact we've got the best fans in the country. And academically, it's the best college in, in the world. So those things are very valuable. Absolutely. What do you think this, this Mackey Arena has this atmosphere, like you said, the best fans, the paint crew? Um why do you think that's so special here? Well, they enjoy basketball, and they enjoy, and they know good basketball, and they make it very loud in here for the opponents, so it's a great home court advantage. Do you have any other stories, you know, with, with coaches or 
Coach Painter maybe in particular that you want to share with the audience? Mm, I just have a lot of good stories that are all positive and uh, it's, a pleb- it's a really a pleasure to be able to work for Purdue and had a lot of good bosses. George King was a great boss. Presidents were here are always very good to me and uh, I always appreciate the fact they hired me. And we just had the IU-Purdue game. Purdue won Saturday. Yeah, that was fun, but uh, you know, we've had a lot of games like that where we didn't win, so yeah. uh, it's always been a great rivalry, and it's always been something that we always look forward to, all of us. Yeah, why do you think that rivalry is so special? Because we're, we're both uh, uh, very competitive at both schools, and uh, we all love all sports, not just basketball, and I think it's a sporting state where if you play any sort of team sport, women's and men's both, it's People are for you. Yeah, absolutely. When you talk about recruiting, I'm sure it's a lot different than it was when you were coaching. What advice would you give a student who wants to come to Purdue and is being recruited to play basketball here? Well, take advantage of all the situations here that's uh, available to you. Uh, I always had my sales pitch uh, when I recruited was about academics mostly because that's what's important. I'm very uh, proud of the fact that I have my master's and few hours towards my doctor so uh, the academic part is uh, invaluable and that's that's the part you need to, to uh, pinpoint on yeah and also you know there's only a certain percentage who go pro right someday you're gonna have to kind of hang that up yeah one percent to be exact so you need to have your degree okay nba is great but uh, you need to have your degree in case you don't make it sure what advice you know would you leave with our listeners if you had to tell them one thing well, fans. every team is different. I think be patient, uh, stay enthusiastic like they are now because we have the best crowd in the nation. And uh, it's, uh, it's just don't change anything. People that start changing things mess it up. So just be happy with what you have now because Coach Panter is a great coach. Any other last thoughts of, you know, heading into March Madness, the Big Ten tournament? Mm, I'm just looking forward to it. Can't wait to get to the tournament. I hope they do well and win it. And, of course, I always want all the Purdue teams to go to the Final Four. That's, that's our goal as a coach. So it's a situation that's hard to do, but it's, it's, you're capable, and it's uh, available if you can get the right matchups and the right uh, time for the players to play at their best. And are you and your wife always watching every game at oh, home? Oh, every game. If we can get it, every game, yeah. <laughs> if we can't get it, we're kind of frustrated. Do you have any, like, rituals around the games that you have to do a certain oh, thing? Oh, yeah, I had a lot of them. Wear the same shirt, same shoes, same set the same way. You know, I had a lot of superstitions. Okay. What can you share one of them with us? Uh, gosh, I have so many I don't can't remember them all. What's this? What's your favorite shirt to wear? Uh, button down collar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Keep it classy. Yes. <laughs> um, or whatever my wife told me to do. Yeah. <laughs> And your wife's a big Purdue fan, too. Did she go here? No. No? no. Okay. She loves it because of you. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, she couldn't believe it. My name was on the court. Oh. She said, why? <laughs> well, you're you. I mean. <laughs> well, I said, I don't know. I was just happy they did it. <laughs> it looks great. I mean, it, like, how does it feel to you to be back here, though? And to well, it feels it? Uh, very uh, rewarding and I'm happy to be here. I always enjoy the way Coach Painter coaches, so uh, it's just fun to be here, and I enjoy the fans' enthusiasm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that covers it all. Okay, well, thank you for having me. It's, it's my pleasure to be with you, and good yeah. luck to you. I hope you have a tremendous job. Thank are you are you a graduate? I am. I graduated in 2012. Good, good, good. good. Yep. You get paid for this job? I get paid to do this. How cool is oh, this? Oh, wow. That's like <laughs> me getting paid to be a coach. Exactly. <laughs> Dream job. Doing what you like to do and love to do. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.